Yeah, back again, ladies and gentlemen. Hot 97, real late. Uh, my man, Master Killer, has a new album right now called uh, Loyalty is, is Royalty. Royalty. Yes, sir. Master Killer is in the building on Hot 97. How are you, man? I'm great. I'm great. Life is good. You still rocking with noodles? We still doing this? Oh, yeah, man. Noodles. Got to. Where did that come from? Why noodles? That's the Cuban link era. Yeah, why, do, why that name, though? It was given to me. And you were cool with it? I, would, I, I have a problem with it. Did you understand what it, what the hell it meant exactly, though? Well, I know it came... I, I think it came from the uh, the classic um, Robert De Niro movie, the um, uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Ah. You know what I mean? So, you know, we all just, you know, just got in the, got in the Cuban link mode and just went in. Uh, let's see. That <clears throat> that album... In Cuban link mode, we're talking about 95. You guys were making right. it 95-ish. That's, That's 22 cool. years ago. Ooh. So you guys are in your 20s. You're just... I mean, I'm still in my 20s, and you're still in your 20s. <laughs> you look tremendous. Um, when when did you? You were the the last member technically to join Wu Tang, right? Well, I was always there. It was never really a, a joining process. Yeah, I guess there was. You know I, mean? I know we always fans were always like, "How did you join?" <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't a jumped in process, right? You right, know right. What I mean? But um, I was I was blessed enough to you know be lyrically gifted enough to make that squad. What was the first record you were on? Mr. Be a Chess Boxing. First rhyme I ever wrote. Really? First rhyme I ever wrote. Took it to the Jizza to get his approval and his opinion. And when he told me I had something, I took it serious. You know? And at that point, how did your relationship, how did the friendship start? Let's start there. How did your friendship, who was the other members that you, I, I'm always curious, Right. Everyone came from different angles to come right. together. What was your foray? I came from the Brooklyn Chamber. You ah. know what I mean? I came from the Brooklyn Chamber. I um I met Jizza actually through my brother True Mass, you know. True Master, all right. True Master, um, legendary producer. Um and when me and Jizza, when we met, we just clicked, man. We just clicked right off the top. You know what I mean? And and it was everything actually other than music. You know, it was it was it was chess. You know what I mean? It was it was mathematics. It was it was building. You know what I mean? And you know, music was actually last because I, I really I, 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 most of our days are chess days. You know, that's my chess partner. You know what I mean? And still we'll, to this day. Still to this day, we'll play seventy two games in one day. Come on, I'm serious. I'm serious. We, Y'all are, I'm guessing you're smoking while you're doing this as well, right? Oh, we, we, we're chilling, man. Okay, so it's an entire <laughs> day of chilling of... Yeah, yeah, just chilling, man. You know, and, 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 and mind you, there's different ways to play. So we play on the clock. So the games are not... How at, long's the game then if you clock it? Six minutes. Three, three for him, three for me. That's it? That's it. So within those six minutes, one of us has to win. Or you, if your time runs out, game is over for the person that time is, is run out on. Do, how so, do people <laughs> view timed chess versus like an open-ended game like how how is that seen by someone who's very into chess is one more respected than the other well one is just on the clock and you have to you it's know a different way of thinking it's speedy you have to, you know speed chess you know what i mean you have to think fast you know what i mean that's so interesting i never yeah. I, I okay so in you guys so at what age did you guys start getting into uh to chess oh man i, I mean chess was introduced to me at a very young age, I had to grow into the patience of chess. I was more into checkers, because checkers is a fast pace. Even though checkers, you have to be, you know, you have to have strategy and and, and, and um, it's a very strategic game as well. Yeah, it's funny, people belittle chess. I mean, checkers, they yeah. go, oh, this, is che this ain't, che nah, this ain't you, chess, it's checkers. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, but you, you know, you have to respect checker players as well. Okay. You know what I mean? It's just a faster paced game. Okay. Uh, chess is more of a, now you have to slow down a little bit and understand what each piece does. You know what I mean? Each piece has a different function. Why did Jizza get into chess? Why Why did that start as a thing in the first place? Because I was beating them up. And he was like, we need to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't working. For but it is an interesting game for young dudes to play. Right. Right? right, right. I mean, it is random. I mean, I mean, it teaches you. I mean, it, it's, it's a beautiful um, game of patience. It teaches you to think first before you move or before you speak. You know, we have two ears, one mouth. You should listen twice before you speak once, you know. Um, it gives you gives you jewels of life that's very valuable and could be used in life, you know what I mean? 
According <laughs> to your uh, discography, mm -hmm. they have uh, Chess Boxing first, so that's right. Right. Followed by Snakes on Old Dirty's album. That's correct. Followed by this little classic right here. Mm. <laughs> are you are you part of this intro to this record too? Or were you there for that too or no? Well, I was there for everything. Okay. You know what I mean? But you're not it, talking on this though. No, I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking. It's just ghost telling a story about yeah. wallabies. Yes. 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 Classic skit right here. You know what I'm saying? And they tell you I'm not even be like you hear the hot 97 drop in the background <laughs> like the radio's <laughs> on but doc get this doc cream oh yeah oh yeah this, oh, is, the, this is the third one this is the first third yes, appearance sir. yes sir Sir. Um let's let's go through your verse here for a second. Raise <clears throat> first. Mm -hmm. Um here we go. Proceed with caution as you enter the symphony. Degrees of punishment increase intensely. Uh -huh. Syndrome was caused by the deadly drums, but the battle was yeah. won by won. scores being swung. Slice it with a vocal from the international vocalist. Your style is too local to this. How how are you? This is the first rhyme. Th this is the first rhymes you're ever writing in life. First rhymes I've ever written in my life. So you don't have like a huge notebook. Each I don't have I don't have any notebook. Each song is just <laughs> what you've written for that song. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. that rhyme you hit right there, the international vocalist, the right. style is too locoed up with this. Right. So that's pretty complex rhyme schemes for someone who's making this up. Right. But at the same time, I've I've I wasn't a a local person. Um, I mean, you know, hip hop didn't, you know, I didn't start traveling being in the hip hop industry. You know, I was already, uh, you know, moving to, around. Yeah, moving around, Doing traveling. What? Um, you know, my mother kept me, you know, um, traveling and going different places, and I was blessed to see different, you know, places. One of them at um. As a matter of fact, my brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico are going through it now. But I was, you know, wow. able to, you know, travel and go to Puerto Rico maybe at the age of 10 or 11. You know what I mean? Florida and Texas and things of that nature. You know what I mean? So I was always traveling and moving around. And So did that you know, make your... <clears throat> where exactly in Brooklyn were you from? Brooklyn, uh, East New York, Bed-Stuy, everywhere. I, I lived all around Brooklyn. So is that... Was, was that an unusual experience, you know, compared to the kids around you, that you're jumping on planes and traveling with your mom as a kid? Def definitely. And it was experiences that I never shared because you would be like the like a misfit, like you're, the, like you're the, the nail sticking up. You know what I mean? It's like those experiences, you know, you don't want to come back and seem like you're rubbing it in your friend's face. You know, some of my friends probably never been on a plane before. You know what I mean? So you don't want to come back and share those experiences with your friends and you know their condition. You know, I was blessed. You know what I mean? I had a mother that wanted me to see other things in life besides just the, the street corner. You know well, what did mean? your mom always have a pretty good job and was able to make those things happen? She had a decent job. She had a decent job. She, she, was, she was a hardworking woman. How many siblings did you have? I was her only child. Got it. So you, the two of you could just move around together. Right. I was her only child. I had other brothers. My father, you know, my father's a Rolling Stone. <laughs> okay. Got it. Got it. But yeah. you only live with you and your mom. Correct. So as a result, when your mom wanted to go away, it was just the two of She just had to pay for the two of you to go away. Exactly. exactly. Um, and, and at what age did you meet the Jizza? Um, wow. Uh, I want to say maybe 2021. 20, so he was already on. Yeah, he was already on. He was, he was and, a coach, and, 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 and yeah, he was already done his thing at coach, and I had no knowledge of that. You know, you didn't I, even know past the bone. I didn't even know past the bone. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I didn't know come do. I didn't know any of that. You know, um, um, like I said, I actually met him through True Master. You know what I mean? And um, and and Jizza, man, you know, I, I learned a lot from from my brother Jizza, and um. You know, he would, like I said, he would never, you know, he wasn't one of those MCs that, you know, wants to rhyme all the time for you and display his rhyme techniques and saying rhymes. And, you know, he was always so cool with it. You know, we'd be together and I remember, 
people coming up to him and I guess they knew who he were and they would want to battle him and stuff like that. And that was the era of, of <laughs> you might just want to show up and battle someone on the spot. Yeah, and he would listen to these brothers, you know, kick their rhymes, but he would never say anything, you know? So one day I asked him, like, yo, what's, what, what is this all about? Why these people keep approaching you? You know what I mean? Because I had no idea that he was already on, you know what I mean, to that degree. You know what I mean? People knew him. He had a video. He was doing his thing, cold chilling. You know, and um, but uh, yeah, I learned a lot from the brother, man. You know, what and I mean? so he started. <clears throat> and, and how early did you meet Old Dirty? All around the same time, all around the same Got time, it. like one after the other, it was like a domino. What was Dirty like in those days? Free, free spirited. You know what I mean? Um, you know, always the wild dude, always well that guy. I mean. I would say free, not always wild, okay, but wild to the point of outside of the box thinking. <laughs> you got know it, what I mean? got it. Not boxed in. I'm, I'm free. I'm, I'm a free. But not, student. but also not the version of him never, that, never, that we came to know later when he was at that point doing drugs a lot of the time and appeared to be wilding. It wasn't right. that. He was just a free spirit. Right, right, right. And always had a special energy, I'm guessing. Always had a special energy. Always had a special, especially when it came to music. I mean, oh, man, I miss him. Like, he, I remember um, when I came to Jizza with my thoughts on paper as far as chess boxing, and I remember him coming to Jizza's house that day, and I also let him read my thoughts. You know what I mean? He was like, you wrote this? I was like, yeah, he said, but you got to you gotta know how to say it. You got to say it with attitude and you got to get that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, he had that that aura in him, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, that was one thing, you know, about him when, you know, he was a special, special brother when it came to this music, man. He you got know? busy on that one, too, on chess yeah. boxing. Oh, yeah. yeah Represent. Yeah. You, you hear his energy. Yeah. That's what he was trying to convey to me. You know what I mean? And wanted me to get, you know, be more of that. You know what I mean? Well, but. he was the <laughs> ultimate vessel. He allowed, uh, to me, a lot of times, I love really lyrical rappers. Mm. And I love people who just feel the energy also. And the best, I think, are the people who allow, who do both, right? Mm, right. I think that's probably why I'm known as such a Kendrick fan. Mm. It's because he's both lyrical. Yes. But he never... You know he listened to the beat. You know he felt the music yes. when he allows. That's why he does lots of like the random sounds, the do 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 do, all right. that kind of stuff is just. Right. And Dirty was a master at just being part of the song. Being he was an, an instrument. instrument. <laughs> See, <laughs> now let's well, tell me about making this record right here. Underrated Wu Tang classic. Mm. Huh. Forgot about this intro version. You'll you'll know where it's going. It was just on the <laughs> album that it had this. I forgot about this. Okay. I don't know. I'm surprised this one's on my computer, but you'll know in a second. You got me on this one so far. <clears throat> oh wow! <laughs> wow. Coming That's at your door. door. Start to scream out loud. Wu Tang's back, back for more. more. Yes, the hour's wow. four. I told you before, prepare for Mike fight. Man. And plus the Cold mm. War. This rhyme you digest through the Rizzo console. Song right here. Only thing I can tell you about this song is everybody that's on this song right now, okay, we did our thing. But I remember. Cap I was about to say, this is going to be about Cap isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I remember him coming to the studio, man. I, I was there when he did his verse. And he just went crazy, man. Oh, I mean, he, they, you kept it. Yeah, he just went crazy. He, he does something like <clears throat> a 128 or it's, it's a, or 96 went, bars, maybe? He came right in. And that might have been one take. It feels like it. That might have been one take. I mean, no punches. He just came right in and just got right in the booth. And just went crazy, man. Did you, you know, know I mean? at the time this was for a soundtrack, or is this just a random? This is a song. This was this was everybody still loving the art and the sport and going to Riz's house, going to the basement, man, and, and getting it, getting it in. 
That's you it. Know, just getting it in. So th- when this ends <clears throat> up appearing on Don't Be a Menace, right. it's, it's just because they probably asked for a record and they're like, oh, here's a record. Exactly. Exactly. No, we didn't have any, I mean, I didn't have any thought of any direction of where the record could go, but it was just about being there and doing what we love to do. How, how, <clears throat> in a lot of ways, my relationship with Wu Tang's music, as I'm guessing it is for a lot of people, is personal. And you don't, the records that you love, right? I don't. You don't always have a realization of how other people feel about the record, mm. um, with, with with the exception of the hits. Mm. Hold it. Yeah, that was like where the uh, three or four rhymes that I had. <laughs> Still learning how to say them. Calm and deadly. Splatterhead lyrics I lick through your transmit. MC submit to the will as I kill your juvenile freestyle. Civilize the mental. Devils worship this like an icon. Bear hugging mites with the grips of a python. See that? See that line right there? What's that line? Let's go. Um, uh, bear hugging mics with uh, Mark, bear hugging mics with the grips of a python. See, that's the Jizzle line right there. He gave me that line. Really? Yeah, he just he, fed that to you? Yeah, he gave me that. See, because I was still constructing and learning how to put it together, and he might have told me to say that. You know, that's dope. That's yeah. really dope. And <clears> um, <throat> and you said this was still the time when everyone would just show up to Riz's house and go. How long did that period last where even with the success you were starting to have, right. the routine was still wake up, do whatever, blah, 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 and right. just go to Riz's house? Man, um, well, it was, you know, between his house and then when we started going to, you know, different studios in, in Manhattan or wherever we would be at, from Manhattan to, you know, L.A., wherever we was at, you know, that was always the routine. You know, Riz is the abbot, you know what I mean, um, of the woo and... and, and Man, all of the music came from him at that time. I mean, all the first classic albums came from RZA. So his house or his chamber was the place to be, you know, to uh, to be a part of this movement that was just growing, man. And was he always, for the first couple of years, was he usually in the lab? Oh, uh, you, you wouldn't have seen him because that's the only place he was at. He was in the basement, man. He was in the basement. And would a question would would people and I don't know I, I could have asked him this I've, but I, while I have you here we're talking about it mm. would people like Rifkin and business people come to him because he'd always be there or would he go would he still go out some and meet with people etc. Yeah, well, I think when it came to handling business, sometimes he probably you know had to walk some dogs. You know what I mean? But for the most part, when it came to the creativeness of what we were doing, I mean, I mean he didn't come up for air, man. He stayed in the pocket, man. He was in the chamber, man. Um, so that record that we just played, Winter Wars, would you describe that as a a very popular record? Like, where do you put that in the lexicon of records you you guys play when you're out and things like that? Oh man, I mean, like, do people get excited when you play that, or do you guys not play it out? Um, you know, actually, when that record comes on, we perform that record. Nobody performs that record except Capadon. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> the mathematics throw, throws that on on stage. Everyone knows that that's Kappa's. Oh, so they, he just plays it for him, and he and he him. just gets off his bars. And that's it. That's it. How unique an individual is Capadonna? Oh man, he's a great brother, man. Great brother. He he always seems like just a real interesting dude, man. Like right. positive energy. Definitely. Um, my <clears throat> first thing that I ever knew about Capadonna, and I don't know him personally. I mean, we've met a couple times, but I right. don't know him. I got to get him up here, but Cap. When you guys first started popping, Cap was known because I guess there was a chick he had, uh, and he would always be at Maryland, University of Maryland. Okay. And people, when you guys were playing D.C., right. I would hear just through the grapevine, people like, yo, Capadonna's on campus. Like, mm. he would be up there and just hanging out. Right. And he just seemed like a very regular dude. And then the stories came, he stayed in Maryland for a long time. Okay. And I think was driving a cab. Okay. Like, he's always done random things, but has always appeared to have this just warm energy that people gravitate towards, is what is, is what I've seem to hear. Right, right, right. Would you say that's accurate in describing Cap? I, w- I would say that. I would say I, I, as long as I've been knowing the brother, it, it's always been positive, man. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen him on anything negative. You know what I mean? How often do you, How yeah. who do you speak to the most currently from Wu-Tang? I would be Jizza, you know, because anytime we have a chance to play a game of chess, that's what we do. 
You know, what I mean? y'all. So y'all are just gonna be old man friends sitting yeah. around playing chess yeah, one yeah, day. Definitely. That's that's. <laughs> but who else? Do you speak to anyone else or no? I mean, I speak to everyone. Everyone, definitely. You know, um, everyone out, out of out of the, the person that I might speak to the, the least is Ghost because he's always missing. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know Ghost. What I mean? But that's Ghost. You know what I mean? But everyone else I speak to, you know, every so often. Everyone is busy. You know, doing what they do. Um, but yeah, Deanie, he does seem to, he has his own, you know, he'll just pop up random. Yeah. Like, I see him on the street. Like, I literally, I saw a ghost at All-Star last weekend, just stand on the street. Yeah, I, I don't even ask him for his phone number anymore. He he gets a new phone like every week. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I've ever had a contact that's lasted very long on Dini. So, um, you guys are, you know, t- through that period, you appear on, you know, more and more joints. You're on Jizz's album, uh, on Liquid Swords, you're on, uh, Duel of the Iron Mike, mm. um, which is a classic. You you're on Iron Man. Um, let me keep going. You appear on the Sons of Man album, the Killer Army album, the La the Dark Man album. And all this time, I'm sharpening my skill. Like I'm just I'm learning more and more. Each album, you know, that's you know, that's you know, I love my brothers, you know, Wu Tang, you know, because they allowed me to uh they allowed me to perfect my my craft. You know what I mean, and and study as well as you know, as well as get paid at the same time. You know what I mean, and um, you know it was a beautiful thing, a beautiful time, man. You know what I mean. And you end up not <clears throat> dropping your solo album till much after. No said date doesn't come out. I mean, the name's appropriate. It, right. It, right. it doesn't right. drop. So <laughs> why why did it take until what oh three for uh for no said date? No June one oh four. Right. Why'd it take so long for no said date to drop? I mean, you know, being in a in in an all star cast family like Wu Tang, um, those brothers, you know, were like you said, rhyme books. They had rhyme books. They were ready. You know what I mean? That was this was their vision to do this. You know what I mean? I came with Jizza and was blessed to be a part of a movement and was able to you know, sharpen my skill to become, t- you know, to that level of 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 uh, of sword play. You know, with this with this um hip hop culture and this art. You know what I mean? And um, I wasn't ready before then. You know, like I said, all those other albums that I was on maybe once or twice. You know, I'm still learning. I'm still sharpening my sword and you know, understanding, you know, what it is to be in the studio. I mean, Mystery of Chess Boxing was the first time I was ever in a studio behind a microphone. That's so, that, learning that is so insane to me. <laughs> like, you're, it also, that's also challenging, too, when your first thing you've ever done is a classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, that's just, that's that that right there sets you up for an interesting run. And then also, how long were you on the road? How often were you on the road? Oh, man, we stayed on the road. We stayed on the road. We stayed going everywhere and and stamping that flag, man. I mean, going everywhere, doing everything. How did it work? A lot of uh, people have wondered about this, and I think I saw in the interview that, like, Bootleg Kev talked to you guys about this, like, Mm. how you guys would um, determine who got what on the road. You seem like a very laid-back dude. Right. You don't necessarily seem like the dude who's demanding to get yours, you seem more like, I, I, and I don't know you well, right. but you seem more like the guy who just wants to keep building and be happy for the opportunities. How did you handle that? Did you always feel like you were well taken care of for what you were doing? How, how would you describe those early years from a financial standpoint in terms of how it worked out for Master Killer? Well, I was always, I, I was always good. I was always good. I mean... From a financial standpoint, none of us was making a lot of money. I mean, we were doing shows and, you know, we were getting maybe $25, $50. It's nine, ten of us that has to split maybe $1,000, $2,000, and we all have to get rooms and things of that nature. So, you know, no one has a suite by itself. You know, we're all sharing rooms. We're in 12 passenger vans. And we out here, man. You know what I mean? Did you ever go and did you ever go and hype? for anyone else when they were on a solo run or no? Like situations like that, like Ray's going out or Ghost right. is going, because you get to a certain point in the in the later 90s right. when Ghost and Ray and Jizza, I'm guessing, start getting to the point of being $10,000, $15,000, $25,000 artists. Right. So right. did you ever just jump out with someone else to work specifically with them 
or did you just do Wu Tang tours? I mean, it was everybody was working, so I could catch a flight. I, I know Ray is in Chicago. I might catch a flight to Chicago, do a show with Ray. Never as a hype man because I had songs. So you would just come out and do your joints, do my joints. And Jizza is in Texas. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm going to catch Jizza. You know what I mean? And then we have a Wu joint in Florida. I'm, I'm everywhere. So, so l- looking back. At what point was it much, much later when like the festival money started being so big that it was actually a very valuable appearance? Well you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, when it started getting valuable, when I when it started seeing some 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 paper to that degree, I think it was might have been the Rage Against the Machine tour. Okay. That's so when things started. That's ninety eight, I think. Right. So five years in, right on tours like that, you're now starting to actually. Everyone is actually making a nice little. Yeah, you 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 know, you got your own room now. You got your own room now. <laughs> you're able to stack a little something from <laughs> right, that. Right. And then by the time you go five years forward from that, mm-hmm. early two thousands, rock the bells. By that era, it's right. looking pretty. It's pretty good. Well, listen, none of us in twenty five years has had to go back to doing anything that we did before music. That's pretty good. Which is a blessing. And that's everybody. Everyone. Of the, the, the nine of you guys. Right. Everyone, everyone's been able to just stick with music. Exactly. So with varying degrees, I'm guessing, of how much they want to continue to do music. Right. But everyone's done well. Definitely. Um, Definitely. And have the best years been like the last 10 years? I mean, it's hard to say what's the best years when we're still here. Right. Yeah, that's you know a good point. I mean? You it's, know, we're still blessed to still be relevant to be here. I'm sure. <laughs> Still here kicking it with you. And every couple of years, you know that a <laughs> festival run's going to come up. Right. Or, you know, you guys still get out in front of 50,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. Where? And I think and I think that, honestly, one of the great stories about Wu-Tang that's not talked about enough is how overall, how well you guys do get along considering how many personalities there are. Yeah. We hear about, it's great. I actually enjoy the Wu-Tang spats that happen right. because they're so <laughs> light. It's so, they're, they're like, every time it's like, RZA says blah, 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 but right. Raekwon says blah, but then right. five minutes later, they're working on a joint together. Exactly, exactly. I mean, no one has did anything to cross the line past the point of no return. Never, that's nah, never happened. nah. Nah. Um, how how difficult was the period around when when Dirty passed for you? Oh guys? man, I mean, that was the terrible. It was a terrible time. You know, that's one of the founding members. You know, what I mean, that's also my brother, man. You know, and um, that's an unreplaceable energy. You know what I mean? That's you know, losing Dirty man was like uh, you know, if you know something about the game of chess, that's like losing two rooks on the board, man. You know what I mean? That that's like I said, you know, <clears throat> very difficult to still win. Possible, but very difficult. Do you think it impacted the ability for you guys to consistently get together and do studio albums and things of that nature as a unit? Do you think losing him had that impact? Um, Losing him, you know, had an impact on everything. You know what I mean? I actually, you know, it was, you know, in any relationship, keeping it together is not easy. Especially after the passing of someone. Yeah, not easy. You know what I mean? I mean, in any relationship, you know. Um, parents get, when God forbid a parent loses, when parents lose children, which is, yeah. of course, the hardest death you can deal with. Yes. A lot of parents can't stay together. Yeah. You know, a lot of relationships change. Siblings fall apart when when people pass away because of the level of impact it can have. Correct. Correct. And, um, you know, like I said, his energy, it brought so much. You know what I mean? So he, he will always be missed, you know what I mean, greatly. You know what I mean? Tell us, uh, so tell us about uh, Loyalty is Royalty. The album came out last week. People can go on uh, iTunes and cop it. I'm guessing they can go on Spotify, Spotify and yes. uh, mm-hmm. Apple and Tidal and Tidal. all things like that and yes, get it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but it's your fourth studio album. It's out on Nature Sounds, who you've been with since the very beginning. Yes, sir. Shout out to Nature Sounds. Devin, my man. Devin's a good, good dude. No question. Um, and you got Ninth Wonder, PF Cutting, Dan Grease, RZA, True Master. Uh, you're on the boards. My man Ill Mind's on here. No question. So t- tell a little bit about this album and, and how you feel about it, how proud of it you are. 
I'm very proud of this album. You know what I mean? I you know, I think I'm I think I'm still, you know, evolving like, you know, as far as, you know, um music is concerned. Like, you know, I have a certain passion for it right now that, you know, like I'm discovering something else about it right now. I don't I don't know I don't even know what it is, but um, you know, I, I, I love it, man. You know what I mean? And to still be here, like I said, to still be relevant. Um and to to kind of kind of feel the climate of 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 the of the of the music that's out today and i want to fill the void of kind of what's missing you know what i mean i'm not afraid to do it still you know what i mean i don't care what nobody else is doing i don't have to follow that you know i don't have to try to make a name well, or, that's the beauty of being part you know. of the greatest collective of all time there's always <laughs> going to be people who just want to be like what are these Wu Tang guys doing right now? Let right. me hear what Master Kill is up to. Right, right, right. And, you and know, let me hear bars. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And 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 you know, like I said, I'm proud to still be able to still you know give you know true hip hop fans something that they might have been craving for for a little while. How do you like some of the things that are going on today in in music? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Like you know, J Cole's Kendrick. You know, I I, I like Drake. I like Meek Mills. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's Few, few, a lot of brothers out there that I like, you know what I mean? There is so consistently, I'm sure you meet people who are, tell me if this is a regular conversation. Maybe it's not. Right. It is for me. How often do people of your generation, right. and you're in your 40s, come up to you and give you the spiel of like, man, everything today is whack. I, I just miss Wu-Tang. And you, while you appreciate the compliment, mm. I silently you're like, yeah, everything's not whack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's actually good stuff out yeah, here. Yeah, it's definitely it, man. First of all, there's so much music out there right now, man. Bruh. You, you can't even keep up with it. I know, that's you know the funny I mean? thing, too. When people tell you that, it's like, are you really listening to everything? Yeah, I Like, mean, go on the iTunes rap section and try to listen, get through what's there. You, you won't. You won't. Because tomorrow, there will be another 100, 200 songs there. You will never, I mean, there's so many great MCs. There's so many great, you know, people out there putting out great music right now. It's just, it's so much music. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so um, nah, not all not all of this music that, that the young brothers and sisters what, are making today are, are, is bad. I, I won't say that. So on the on the front page, which which you're on, there's uh the new A Boogie with the hoodie. Mm -hmm. There's Ritz, uh, who's a dope. Dope uh, MC. There's a new Kevin Gates project. Mm -hmm. There's a new G Herbo project that people really like. The um, Rhapsody's album, shout out to Ninth and those guys, mm. is phenomenal. Rhapsody's right. album is special. Right. There's the Master Killer album. Um, DJ K Slay has a new compilation with everyone on it. This is literally mm. me just reading randomly. The Cool Kids dropped a new project. My man Dougie F has a project. Wow. Um, Chief Keef has a new project. If that's more your 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 zone, mm. Wyclef just put out Carnival Three. That's I, up I, there. I, I see that. I see that. Yeah. Apathy and OC. If you want that classic uh, producer MC, mm. underrated rapper who I didn't know had a project. Gunplay has a new project mm. out. I'm mm. a Gunplay fan. Mm. Um, shout out to the DJ Austin Mills has an EP out. I Young think, Thug put out a project. I think my man Rusty Jux. Might have a new project. Oh, out. really? Yeah, you might have something out as well. You know um, I mean? Macklemore dropped a new project. Um, Smoke Perp, who's dope, put out a kid put out a new project. Right. I know my man Agala just put out new music. So it, it's just like yeah. from literally Endless. the stuff you grew up to the newest to artists. You always like there's constantly music. So I always right. encourage people to just listen bef before you say everything's trash today. Listen, and also remember, like that the the. The amount of Wu Tang records, right. songs mm -hmm. that ended up in heavy rotation mm -hmm. are not nearly as many as people believe in their memory. Right. right. They look back and are like, man, remember when y'all were on the radio every five minutes? It wasn't really, there was ice cream, right. there was I'll be there for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Protect your neck in the very early days early of Hot days. 97. Right. But by the time Hot 97 became a viable business, mm -hmm. You were not hearing mm -hmm. Triumph all... Well, the Triumph's a bad example because y'all were so huge at that point. Right. But by and large, you would agree, right? Like, It's Yours wasn't playing nonstop. No, no. It no, wasn't. You were no. just... Y'all had the streets. Right. You right. know? And, and, and it resulted in this amazing cultural 
thing where you guys became like a like a Led Zeppelin or a Beatles. Right. You know, you have became an international thing where that logo mm -hmm. will sell right. forever. Right, right. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, when did that, when did it, when did it really get in your head? Was it the first trip to Japan, which they documented in the movie, uh, the show, I think? Right. W when was it when you looked around and were like, guys, we're not just like the other rappers that are out. Like this Wu-Tang thing is like, people will tattoo this and keep it forever. Like this is right. something iconic. When did that make it to your to your brain that you realized that? Um, I still don't really look at it like that. Really? I still don't look at it like that. Um, I, You know, I think if you look at yourself like, okay, I'm on top then there's no room to grow. There's nothing else to do. I try to always look, leave a little room for improvement, a little room for, you know, to elevate. You know what I mean? So, you know, and, and when you're in it, you don't see it the same as a person outside looking at you because you're in it. You know what I mean? So you have to deal with the BS, the all everything that comes with it besides just the glory of getting to be like, well, you know, I... uh I am in. The, you might have heard of the rap group I'm in. Well, because the thing is, you're obviously a guy who can walk down the street on a given right. day and not get recognized. Right. So, definitely. So you can have. Com are there? Com tell me about a conversation when you meet a stranger, <laughs> and you're like, "Yeah, I'm, I do music." And right. then, and when then when you tell them, have you ever had that happen where well, you have to tell someone, "I'm actually in Wu Tang Clan," and they're like, "Excuse me." Well, I never, I never flash my badge. Never? I don't flash my badge. But what if someone's prying? <laughs> what if you're at the airport, right? Uh -huh. Just sipping a drink at the bar. Right. And there's a businessman next to you who just strikes up a conversation. I'm going to tell you, most people, when they run into me, they think I'm ghosts. Really? I get that most of the time. You're only wearing one sweatshirt. That's impossible. <laughs> most, of the, most of the time when people see me, when they do act like they're trying to figure it out, when they come, it's... Your ghost face, right? <laughs> so how do you handle that? Because I get the, this is even crazier, I right. get the, your Ebro a lot. <laughs> so how do you handle when you get that? Because you know they mean it as a compliment. Right, right, right. But right. it would also be nice if they got your name right. right. At least that's how it feels. Right. How do you handle it when they say that? I laugh, I laugh, and I'll be like, no, nah, you know, I'm master. And, oh, yeah, you know, so many of you, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? And it's all cool, man. You know what I mean? So you've yeah. never once had to drop on someone. You know, um, yeah, I'm in music. They're like, oh, really? You do music? You don't say. I, I don't really follow very much what's going on. Yeah, I was in a rap group. Oh, yeah, I like some rap. Well, what group? Right, right. I'm actually, uh, I don't know how to say this. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in Wu-Tang. Right, right. And they're right. like, oh, my God, I've heard of them. Like, right. you've never had that experience? Because I would nah. love to do that to people. Nah, I really, because, I mean, that's not really my approach. It doesn't seem like your style. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's not really my approach to things because at the end of the day, you know, I come from a lot of realness, so, you know, and like I said, you know, even from being young and being able to take a trip to Florida, but when I come back to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. most of my friends didn't get to go to Disney World. Wow. Yeah. So what am I really talking about with them? And I understood the difference between being blessed to do something and being able to say, okay, well, nah, you don't come back and rub that in people's faces. And it's like, okay, I'm Master Killer from Wu-Tang. I do that. That's what I do. But at the same time, who cares? You know what I mean? If that's recognized, that's that's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? But I don't I don't wear that like that. You know what I mean? It's like because, you know, everybody is real people. And I guess I mean? you can, from a career standpoint, you can always look at, there are two ways you could have handled things. You could rest on your laurels and be like, I was in Wu-Tang, I am in Wu-Tang, we had an amazing run and we'll always be able to make money. Right. Or you can also look at it as I'm Master Killer, the solo artist, and right. I want to keep growing. I want to keep making great music. Definitely. Get more response, get reach more, more audience as, as me. Right. So you can have your own individual challenges right. as opposed to sitting back. You know, some people could have sat back and I have no idea if there are members who were like that. Right. And we're just kind of like, Psh, I did Wu-Tang. Bring me a check. There, there, you know, there, there. People handle things different ways, right? Um, but you have a very modest way of of handling. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, Master Killer, <laughs> that y'all reached something that I no one knew was possible. Mm. Um, we haven't seen it again. Mm. Um, we've seen some great things that have been allowed to happen because of it. You right. know, like the ASAP Mob is a is a great 
Definitely. I love those kids. See, that's another, you know, Ferg and them, you know, it's like I said, it's so many, so many people. Yo, and they, and they, man, ASAP, they, <clears throat> they're, they are like their own mini Wu-Tang. If you were to listen to the, the new Mob album or the new Ferg album, I'm telling you right now, right. even if you're someone who doesn't regularly listen to new hip hop, mm. you'd be like, yo, this sounds like the classics. Right, right. I mean, that's, this is what I'm saying, man. 12 so, album too is great. Yes, it's, it's so many, man. So many. And, and I can take a page from, you know, most of their, you know, like I, I might not rock with everything, but some things yeah, I can, I can mess with that. I, I, I like that. You know what I mean? Um, Mass Killer, it's been a pleasure. I, I, I have endless things to ask you, but apparently we have another guest here, and our fire alarm's going off for no reason. No doubt, um, no doubt. Loyalty is royalty. royalty. Yes, sir. Is out right now. Go cop it. I'll leave you guys right now with the single. So I can give you guys a little taste of it, and then you can go out and cop the album. This joint right here is called Therapy. Therapy. Gotta have it. I really appreciate you spending some time, man. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me, brother. Master Killer. Wu-Tang is in the building. It's hot yes, 97. Sir.